Thank you, Andrea. Um, and as Andrea said, I'd like to welcome all of you. Um, my name is Sarah Barron, and for the Education and Social Justice Research Project, I partnered with Protagonizar, which is a microfinance organization that is um, in Argentina, outside of the capital of Buenos Aires, in San Miguel. It is one of the first microfinance organizations in Argentina. It was founded in 1999 by the Jesuits. Um, and before I continue more, I would first just like to say thank you to everyone who made this fellowship possible. It was an incredible experience. I learned a lot, met a lot of amazing people, and I'm very grateful for it. Uh, going in, Protagonist R has the mission of providing loans and access to credit that otherwise people would not have in this area. So with that in mind, I had three central questions that guided my research. The first is looking at how does this model work, what are the specific policies? The second is what is the impact not only on individuals but also on communities? The third is looking at how does this foundation work at the intersection between education and social justice? So a little bit of history and context first. San Miguel in Argentina is similar to what Nick was mentioning, um, a shanty town that um, is on the outskirts of Buenos Aires when the cost of living within the city was too high. And so as you can see here, um, it suffers from a lack of public resources, a uh, lack of economic activity, a uh, lack of government intervention. And the houses are constructed, um, it depends based on the wage income, but sometimes it's brick, sometimes it does have running water and electricity, other times it is simply made out of whatever materials are available, whether that is wood, uh, sheet metal, tarp. Um, and so given these conditions, uh, when the economic crash happened in 2001, this area was hit especially hard. Um, and Padre Rodrigo Zerzaga, who is pictured below, um, is a pastor in this area, and he grew up in this area as well. And he had been introduced to the idea of microfinance in the early 90s, and he thought, well, why not bring it to Argentina? Um, as he mentioned here, unemployment was around 60%, and people were starving, and he just knew he had to do something. So he started, um, and the chapel of Nuestra Señora de Lujan, also pictured below, uh, where he was pastor, and he started with only six volunteers. His father donated $500 for the first loans. And then um, it's since grown to have four branches. Um, they currently offer 1,300 loans, and they have a 97% uh, successful return rate. So looking at this, microfinance um, as a concept is based on personal relationships and group-based accountability. So um, with this in mind, Padre, Padre Rodrigo decided to structure his um, in a unique manner that included solidarity. Um, so all of, something unique about uh, this specific microfinance organization is that all 12 of the employees, with the exception of one, are from the same community. So they know the people coming, or many of the people coming asking for the loans. Um, they are integrated into the community. They attend the same church. A lot are neighbors. And so that really helps in terms of accountability. And it also helps in that they know which part of the neighborhood is safe to go to during which times. Um, so how the model operates. So first there are a set of requirements in order for one to take out a loan. Um, and that is there must be a business in operation for six months. A lot of the times these micro businesses are exactly that. They start very small as a way of supplementing if there is income, um, or a lot of times the majority of these people are rely on government aid that is provided. So you, but there must be a business in operation for six months, and then you must join what's called a solidarity group, which is between four to six people. Um, and these people, the point of the solidarity group is that in the instance that one person is unable to pay that week, um, whether it's someone got sick or um, there are a number of other issues that come up because this popu population is extremely vulnerable. Um, if one person cannot pay, then the remaining members must, must pay for that person. So um, another one of the requirements is that they must live within three blocks of each other. And this makes it easier for the economic evaluations that take place and for communication among the group. Um, then, as mentioned, the economic evaluations are done by the credit assessors at protagonists are. So they ride out on these bicycles, um, many of which, and, and the roads, as you've seen before, are precarious. They're, they flood um, whenever it rains. There's a lot of trash and debris within the streets. But they ride out, and I went on them a couple days, and it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> um, and you ride throughout the town, and you go to the specific homes of the entrepreneurs, because in a lot of cases, the businesses are run through the homes. Um, so you visit the home, and what they do is they assess 
the economic situation and the operational costs of the business. So they look at the assets, the liabilities, if there's any outstanding debt. Um, they account for all that and they also look at the personal family financial situation. And if the final figure is positive, then they are um, approved to receive the loan. The loans typically range from 50 to 3,000 US dollars. So these are very small amounts. Um, and these loans are necessary because this area um, does, most of the financial transactions are in cash. They're not bank accounts. Um, and so also the, the only other options are they're the pago diarios, which tend to, um, they do offer loans, but the interest rate is incredibly high compared to um, protagonists are, which is 5% lower than the commercial banks as well. And so one of the problems is that if they don't, if they cannot pay with these high interest rates, the alternative is the threat of force. So there really is not access to loans for these small businesses, and that is where protagonists are stepped in. Um, so they receive the money all at once and then pay it back um, weekly, usually on a 10-week plan. So looking at the results, um, as I mentioned before, there are currently loans to over 1,300 people. Um, the micro businesses are of, are of a wide range of commercial production service. Um, these include small kiosks, um, people that knit goods, people that will buy clothes from other vendors and then resell them, people that produce food, sell street food. Um, there are also services. There was a tattoo artist. Um, there are people that construct baskets. Um, so there, there's truly a wide range. 75% um, are women. Um, and if you look at the statistics of arrear, which is the, the number of people who pass the weekly payment plan, so say if it was 10 weeks, past that 10th week, they have not paid yet, um, is in the average market 5.5%. At Protagonizar, it is only 2.2%, which gives them a success return rate of 97%. Um, so this is truly incredible, uh, just looking at those numbers. But then also, when you look at the impact it has on individual lives and the entire community, um, it becomes even more impressive. So pictured here is Ro uh, Rosa. She was one of my favorite entrepreneurs that I got to meet. Um, she, I cannot go into her whole story because I don't have time, but you can read it online. Um, it's incredible and inspiring because she went from being homeless and having seven children depending on her um, to now she has her own house. Um, and she was really excited that she had just installed running water. Um, and all this happened in the span of the 13 years that she'd been working with protagonists are. So there's uh, evidence of economic development, both in terms of um, more markets, higher level of productivity, but then there's also another element of education in terms of financial literacy. A lot of the people, um, or everyone who receives a loan is required to take a class called Quintus Claras, which goes over accounting and basic um, fundamentals of finance that helps them give them a little more formal education uh, to put towards their business. Um, another impressive aspect is that with economic development, a lot of the profits go straight into investments, especially since Argentina has such a high inflation rate. Um, so that goes either investments into the business or it goes into um, providing the food and the basic needs of health and shelter, um, improvements on the house, or usually then it goes to the education of the children because 75% are women. The first thing they want to do is put it into their children's education, whether it's buying supplies or sending them to a private school, which are slightly better performing than the public schools within the region. Um, another educational impact is the social values that it encourages. So these teams are working together, um, so encouraging communication, um, time management, uh, and also a sense of solidarity. You're no longer an individual working by yourself, but you have a team to rely on. Um, this is also a solidarity that continues with among the entrepreneurs and the employees too. It's um, many times, so every time they do an economic evaluation, they also do periodic checkups. And they're always asking, um, how's your family doing? They know who's sick. Um, they know if anyone has died. They know if um, someone has gotten married. They really are integrated into their lives um, also as part of the family, as many of them described. And this goes both ways. A lot of the times, the entrepreneurs will offer um, invitations to family gatherings or birthday parties. So um, there truly is a sense of solidarity among both the foundation and the people. Uh, so looking at the intersection then with social justice, um, I think this quote with, from Padre Rodrigo is, just sums it all up. He says, we like to assume that this set of opportunities is a level playing field, but it is not, especially in developing countries. 
Social justice is leveling the field. We are hoping to level the field by providing access to credit. We often instrumentalize or use the poor. Social justice is more about discovering and supporting the human being. Thank you. Our final presentation of the evening brings us to 